Hey guys, we're back here with Quill Quest Game 5. This is going to be Orcs or Goblins versus Warriors of Chaos. Uh, the scenario for this is going to be five tokens spread across the center of the table. Each one is worth one battle point if you hold it at the end of the game. Um, for every token you hold at the start of your turn, you roll a d6. If you roll a 5+, plus, you take d3 wounds and no armor saves. So this isn't something you're going to want your chaff to carry most of the game, and this isn't something you're going to want um, armored up things to be taken. You know, you, this is something you want to capture at the end of the game. I'm going to do a quick little zip on up here through my army. Nothing new. And as always, is Butt Stallion going to survive this game? Place your bets now. Now we'll look at the warrior army, and he's going to be comped at 13. And he's going to have a very, very um, different list than you're probably used to seeing. It's going to be lots and lots of um, drops, lots of small units. Everything has swift stride. I, you know, except for that he's going to have a, a greater spawn like me, but his spawn is not going to have a mark on it. It's going to be a regular greater spawn so that he can fit the eagle in also. So he's going to have tons and tons of fast stuff. I can't have all this stuff hitting me at one time, hitting my Savage Horde, so I need to be a little bit defensive here to start this game, and I need to start whittling down some of his threats. Now let's look at the deployments and the vanguards that are going to be here. And he's like, you know, he's got lots and lots of small units here. Um, his characters all by themselves. He doesn't have any of the three plus wards rerolling ones. Uh, he doesn't have a demon prince. He doesn't have chimeras. Um, it's still a whole lot of threats here, but it's not the overpowering stuff that you're really expecting. Um, yeah, and he's gonna have things like demonic steeds that you know probably never seen, especially by themselves. He's gonna have a steed of slanish. Uh, and also these um, skull crushers are on the hill along with the chariot. The dice are where they're supposed to be at. Here's my deployment. Um, I'm spread across here. I'm going to try to put a lot of stuff in between the hill and the building here. Try to be a little bit defensive in that little area. And try to make him come to come to me. And see what I can do to whittle him down. And he's going to vanguard up here with his um, cut some of his marauders and his steed of slanish. And um, I'm not really going to vanguard up much because I figure he has no big units for me to try to redirect. He has no um, real flanks for me to try to get off onto and no war machines. So I'm just going to hang back and not really vanguard. So I went first turn and already I'm going to form like a little defensive line here where the house is and try to use that house to protect my trolls and my wh horde. I'll move up my um, Duke of Orc and everything here. Just try to take care of his monsters, and I really, I nothing I can do about the Disc Lord, so I have to ignore that. It's going to go where it wants to go. I can't really stop it. Um, unfortunately, Duke of Orcs not going to be able to get up to these Marauders where I wanted him to. Um, so I had to put Butt in <laughs> already in harm's way because I don't want his greater spawn to be able to sneak through there and and clip bomb my Duke of Orc and start a fight already. Um, you know, he can probably charge the Marauders, but I'm not really. You know, if he does that, I'll flee, and then hopefully I can take out the Marauders after that. I mean, he'll he'll charge my Wolf Riders. If he charges my Wolf Riders to get the Marauders out of the way, then I'll flee my Wolf Riders, and hopefully I'll be able to take care of his Marauders. And so here we see, like, the end of my turn, and if you see, you saw his armor list, he's got only a 5 plus ward on his Lord, and I mean, my foot of Gork and my Doom Diver and everything are just salivating over that, but I just cannot take it out. I cannot do anything to it. It was, just very, it was very irritating. I think I hit one of his chariots or something. I really do nothing. But it's, it's really very frustrating because I was, you know, get a little bit lucky and you could take out his general to start off the game. All right, his first turn, and like I was saying, he's, you know, way faster than me. So he's going to have a ton of charges just to start off here. Um, his level three on the Steed of Slanish is going to charge. Um, I think it's one of my War Machines, a Spirit Track or something. It's going to wind up failing that. So, I, in a way, it might actually make it. So, it's going to be up there on the hill. His Eagle and his, um, later his Greater Spawn are going to come in on Butt Stallion there. Um, he's going to charge one of his chariots and my Wolf Riders. I'm going to flee them. He's going to charge the Gore Beast and my Gigantic Spider. I'm going to flee that. I'm trying, just trying to slow down that Gore Beast. 
I figure it's, it's pretty far away. I didn't want it moving up its full movement. So it's going to redirect to my trolls and it's going to fail. Um, he can charge the skull crushers at my trolls also and they're also going to fail. Then he's going to charge a chariot, some marauders, and I think his gore beast chariot also, all at my wolf riders that had, they had failed animosity on the first turn, so I forgot to mention that. And I'm going to hold there, and I'm only going to hold because I'm thinking that that if I flee, those wolf riders there are probably going to flee through war machines I have, and I'm way out of my general's range, so rather than taking those panic tests where I'm probably going to fail, I just hold, and I figure he's not going to be able to overrun into my war machines, so I'll be able to take out some of that stuff. So, um, they think the Gore Beast fails, but the Chariot, and I think one unit of Marauders make it, and um, he doesn't feel any dangerous terrain for coming through those woods. So, most of his charges have been failures, but he's going to make it into Butt Stallion. He's going to make it into my Wolves. But, you know, all things considered, he fails a whole lot of charges, which, is, to me, slows him down. Now, for the rest of his movement, he's going to pass his march test on those marauders, and they are going to be able to make it to my mangler. And they'll land on it, and they'll destroy each other. Um, now, going to his magic, I can't really remember where... I, I know he tries to put some spells on my savage orcs, and I dispel it. But I, I don't think he has a very big magic phase. And he has no shooting, so when we go into the combat, poor Blood Stallion, he's going to die right off the bat. Um, his mission was try to keep the spawn from going in between the two. And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think about him um, doing a clip corner to corner so that he could overrun from Butt Stallion into Duke. You know, I was thinking, you know, if he hits Butt Stallion, he'd keep going, he'd miss Duke. I didn't, I didn't think about the clipping thing. So um, his greatest spawn is going to go ahead into um, Duke of Orcs, so they'll be fighting next turn. He's going to wipe out my wolves over there, and he's going to wipe out the spear chucker here. But his overrun here is not going to make it to my Doom Diver down here. So we look at this side of the table, and he's got things on my flanks already, but it's not that much. I mean, I couldn't control that Chaos Lord anyway, so it's really only a chariot over here, so I'm not really concerned right now. Okay, going to my turn two, my Savage is going to try to charge the flank of his um, Spine Beast. It's a fairly large, long charge. I think I needed a nine, but it was, it was worth trying because failing it doesn't really hurt me. Because I wasn't going like, to march up forward anyway. Now, I also charge my trolls at his um, Gorby's chariot, and it's because he got the flaming bat on his um, skull crushers. And I'm thinking, well, I can hopefully beat that um, Gore Beast, and then if I'm lucky, I can overrun into his level two sorcerer, you know, fight them. Hopefully, my shooting's going to wear down those skull crushers so that it's not going to be a threat, and then maybe I can get those trolls off the board. And you know, at that point, they would have been mostly made up their points. I don't have to worry about them being out of the way, and they won't be any real threats to them and they can just you know stumble around fine but if they take out a gore beast a level two sorcerer and you know I'm not gonna worry about what to do after that so I'm gonna fail the savage orc charge but I'm gonna make troll charge now on this other side I'm gonna charge my wolf chariot at his gore beast chariot just I'm hoping to do some wounds to it and hoping you know maybe I can hold two rounds to keep it from moving during his turn um, I'm going to rally my gigantic spider. So when we go into magic, I'm going to have a gigantic magic phase. I'm going to roll double sixes. But I'm not really going to get much done. Um, I'm going to try to put a foot of gork down, I think, on his BSB or something. And it's going to not do anything. And then this spell is just going to go away. I, you know, my other spells aren't really that offensive. I think I shoot... Um, I think I get maybe air we go. I try to do that and he stops it or something. So it's kind of like a waste of a, a double six. I'm going to make up for that though in shooting because I'm going to get Doom Divers on those Skull Crushers. I'm going to wipe out two of them. Um, he's going to have just two wounds left on one. So I'm no longer have to worry about those Skull Crushers. Alright, now let's go back to this picture for the combat. Now, first thing you'll notice is that. Um, I've done two wounds to his um, greater spawn, he's done one to Duke of Orc, so, you know, we're both unbreakable. But what's that pump wagon doing down there? Well, if you remember, his level three was on that hill after it um, fought my spear chucker. So I'm going to pivot my um, pump wagon 
hit the flank of that pumping harder. I'm going to um, come in, but I'm only going to do two wounds when my impact hits that he doesn't save. So he's still alive. You know, he's taking two out of his three wounds. He can strike back. He can only do two wounds to my pump wagon, including with his steed. So all I have is snotlins left. Snotlins are going to kill his level three sorcerer. I need a five to hit, a six to wound. He's got to fill his armor and his ward. It is insane. Snotlins have killed a level three. So this continues this trend of like one well, most unlikeliest of heroes in each game. Level one shaman, Snotlins. It's just, you know, goblins. It's just crazy what's going on. So now going into his turn two, and you also don't notice my trolls did beat that Gorby's chariot. But it didn't destroy it. it. It got away. But I didn't also didn't overrun to his level two, so that's going to get away. And I also moved my characters out in, into my savage horde to protect them from that chaos lord. So now his chaos lord and a chariot is going to charge my bunker. Well, it's not really a bunker anymore because my characters have got out of it. Uh, his battle stand is going to charge Duke of Orc. His eagle is going to charge my pump wagon. And he's also going to charge, I think, Marauder or something at one of my Doom Divers over here. So he's going to have, still have lots of charges. But he's not going to rally that Gorby's Chariot. That's going to flee off the table. And he's going to take his Skull Crusher and move it on the other side of the hill to try to protect it. So without his level 3, his magic's not going to be much of consequence. So we go right basically into combat here. I'm striking first with my Duke of Orc. I get a bunch of attacks. I put all but, I think, two into his spine. Not his spine beast, his spawn. And I, I kill his spawn outright before it can attack me. But then, when, like, my only two attacks. The reason I didn't put hardly any attacks into his battle standard because he's Mark and Nurgle, Weapon Skill 7, so I'm going to hit him on sixes. And then I'm going to, you know, wound him on threes, but I have to hit him on sixes, so. So I'm not able to do anything further to his battle standard bearer. And. You know, maybe I should have attacked a battle standard bearer, but I, th I think I did the best, the best decision to just take out his um, chaos spawn and not worry about the battle standard because it was going to be very difficult for me to do damage to the battle standard bearer. And he's going to strike back and he's going to do two wounds to me with his battle standard bearer, but I'm unbreakable. And then over here, his eagle's also going to storm my pump wagon on this side. And I, yeah, my pump wagon on this side. And just looking at this side of the table, and I'm going to lose a doom diver. But my the chariot going into my um, night goblins, the night goblins are going to stick because my general and my BSB are right there. Now going into my turn um, three, I'm going to charge my Jagged Knight Spider, his chariot, and then that's basically all my charge. I'm going to reform these savages, and I didn't reform them the way I wanted to. You can see this template down. I wanted to have it where I could see that level two and his um, core beast there, and I, after I'd already gone into magic, I put the template down. And I realized it was my stupid mistake. I wanted my shaman to be able to see them, just not see them, but just have the arc there so I could put a foot of gork on them. So instead I have to put foot of gork on some marauders he have, I do hit it and they wipe them out. Um, so you know, that's, that's something, but it's not what I really wanted. And then the spell is going to go away after that. Um, my doom diver is going to try to kill his um, chaos lord. I, th I hit it, but I only do one wound. It's really... Um, that's pretty much going to be the end of my Doom Driver because there's an eagle coming towards it. Um, my Giant Expander is going to be able to kill the Chaos Chariot, so I, I think it actually runs away and I'm going to run it down. And here you can see that, you know, he doesn't have a lot of things that I'm really worried about taking on my Savages, but I'm never going to catch that stuff. It's just way too fast. So my really only hope of my Savages now is that I can get magic off on his guys, and unfortunately, I'm doing one wound here and one wound there and it's weird I have so many juicy targets without you know high ward saves and now I cannot hit with these doom divers to, and do the wounds to save my life it's, it's pretty funny and this is also unfortunately at the end of Duke of Orc I, st I was not able to do another single wound to that battle standard bearer before it killed me so going into turn three for him he's gonna charge his level two at my gigantic spider he's gonna charge um, this eagle at my last doom diver and then he can start trying to surround my trolls there, out there by themselves because they just could not get off the table from beating that Gorby's Chariot and trying to get into level 2 early. I was thinking they could be off the table and then not have to worry about all this. But still, I, th I think it was probably worth it. 
Um, if we go into combat, I'm going to lose my Doom Diver. I'm going to lose my Gigantic Spider. That's going to panic my Night Goblins, and they're going to start fleeing. So we're going to go on turn 3, and I'm going to charge my Savages at his level 2. Try to get them away from the Night go get away from the night Goblins, so if they don't rally and don't go off the table, he won't be charged with that. And I figure I, maybe I can take care of those um, Marauders. So he's going to flee, but my Night Goblins are going to flee off the table anyway. They aren't going to rally. And then in my magic phase, I, again, I mean, I, I'm trying to put Foot of Gork down. It's just, not, it's just not going off. So we go to his turn four. He's going to charge a bunch of stuff at my trolls. And basically, into this entire turn here, he's, going to, he's not going to rally his level two. That's going to keep fleeing. So the rest of his turn is going to be basically this combat here. He's not going to wipe my trolls out. I'm going to have three vomits that I can put on his lord that only has a five plus ward. And I'm not going to do a single wound. I just cannot do it. And here the worst thing is going to be that uh, my trolls are going to hold on, you know, they're still steadfast. They're going to hold on a four and they're not even going to run off the table where hopefully, you know, assuming that he doesn't pursue anything, then maybe I could be shooting his stuff or doing for the Gorkon stuff during my turn. But he's not even going to flee off the table. I'm not even going to flee off the table. So that combo is going to fight again next turn and almost all his stuff is in combat there. So my turn five, just in case he gets any ideas of having this stuff come to me later, I reform again my Savage Orcs here. And my magic phase, after I have so many good magic phases to start with, a lot of dice, I only roll three. But I'm able to get a Brain Burster off on his um, Skull Crusher. He has one wound left. He's not able to spell it. I'm able to wound and kill that Skull Crusher that was hiding behind that hill with um, Brain Burster. <laughs> so I actually got something to work. And, and magic, and it wasn't for the Gork. And then, of course, the rest of my turn, um, my trolls are going to die. I still couldn't, I mean, I, I think I'm white that before I can even fight. And then he's going to reform all his guys, and they're all facing almost different ways to try to mitigate any future photo Gorks that might come this way, if he can't get out of the way of them. And after his turn five, he's going to rally that level two that was almost off the board. If it failed one more time, it'd be off the board. And other than that, he's moving up so that in the bottom of his turn, he can try to start taking tokens. All right, so my turn six, um, I'm going to add a monster to my savages. Having killed a couple of guys, I'm going to move up here to take a token. And uh, I think the rest of these missing savages are from, like, a miscast on Foot of Gork. <laughs> Foot of Gork really does nothing, so there's no really no foul there. And on the bottom of his turn, the only thing he's going to do is just pick up two tokens. So when we add this all up, it turns out to be a 10-10 draw, and it's very, very close. And he's going to get two bonus points, I'm going to get one, I have one token, he has two. And, you know, I, I almost think I did so well at the beginning that, that man, he could never engage me, so I could never really get more points, because I could just, I could never catch all the bad stuff he had. So if, you know, maybe if I'd done a little bit worse with my Doom Divers at the beginning, he would have come in at me more, and maybe I could have done more, but, you know, the same token, he might have wiped out my Savages. But so this is going to wind up being a um, draw, and it's it's just funny that I finally see four years that don't have three plus wards, three one on ones, and I cannot do anything more than one wound. It's just hilarious. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I mean, I think my Doom Drivers are so excited that they just couldn't do do what they needed to do. So yeah, this was real fun. It was it was interesting seeing warriors that didn't have you know the things you're used to seeing. And it was a real, real fast army. I, I don't know how he really did the rest of the tournament, but I know he was kind of disappointed coming into this game. And I also think we both had bad headaches at the start of this game, too. It just started going away as the game progressed. But, um, so this is going to have me three draws now, going to my last game. I don't think I've ever had three draws in one tournament before. Uh, so just pretty crazy. But it's, it's been a lot of close games, and you know, when games when I'm just facing people so much faster than me, I, I feel like I can't catch them. There's no need to get surrounded. So, and I, I think in this case, that was part of the reason why there was a draw, even though I was really aggressive against Dark Elves, and that was a draw, and I couldn't really be aggressive against um, the other works I played because of that gigantic Death Star. Um, so I think there's probably like two of the three draws. But I just don't think I could have just moved in and got surrounded by all that fast heavy head stuff that he had.
So now it's Butt Stallion death tally time. He's died in five out of five games. Oh, Butt Stallion, will you live in game six? It's your last chance. My game six is going to be against Tomb Kings. I'll try to have it up in the next couple of days. I asked him at the end of the Grow Quest. I'm going to try to have a wrap up afterwards. I hope to see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed this. Take it easy.